Hey guys, Simply Betty here. After a long, 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 long summer break, uh, the kids have finally gone back to school. My sanity is slowly recovering, very slowly. And I can finally step back out into the fish room and try to make some cool videos. And I have a lot of work to do in the fish room. Work that I've been procrastinating on. Little improvements here and there, which I just don't do in my day-to-day -day, you know, activities because they're annoying and they take a lot of time when you put them all together. So I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna make the fish room a little bit better by taking care of these issues. And I feel like doing this really gets me in the groove of working on projects and creative things and just the act of doing this big laundry list of just crummy little things that need to be done just makes me feel good and makes me want to do more. Let's go. Where do I start? This back here behind me is a fish rack. It's an automatic water change rack that I put together a couple projects ago. I have a like a playlist on it and how I did it and why. I made it to take away a lot of labor when it comes to water changes for my spawns, especially this winter. I'm gonna be spawning a lot of fish. <laughs> But I need to do something on this. I need a power strip behind here. I'm just running off of two outlets and it's not enough. So I got this nice just outlet strip right here that you can screw into the wall and it's gonna make the fish room slightly better. Here we go. Now I'll plug my air pump in right there. Turn that on. I can get rid of this weird extension thing that I have for my lights. Bye-bye. My light timer can go right there. That was a super easy fix that reduced clutter that makes my life a little bit easier and I don't understand why it took me all summer to do it. Can anyone else relate? While the paint dries, I'll introduce you to the clutter corner over here. This is the clutter corner. Right now it's not so bad, but you can see where I have my brine shrimp hatchery set up. I usually, you know, come on over here with my cups and I pour out my brine shrimp and then I go to the sink and then I, you know, pour the brine shrimp in my little sieve and it's maybe not the best workflow ever. It could be just a tiny bit better. Let me just move this real fast. The other part of the clutter corner is this. This is where I keep all of my tripods for all my, my camera stuff and my light stands and blah, blah, blah. This is kind of where I keep it just propped up in this corner. It's just not the cleanest looking. You know, it could be just a tiny bit better. This is my solution. This is like a, a tool holder I got. You mount it to the wall and it holds like broomsticks and shovels and whatnot. But you know what it also holds? Camera stands, light stands, anything. I'm just gonna attach these things to the wall. I popped the rubber grippies off of those wall mounted tool holders so I could give them a gentle sanding and a paint job. If you're spray painting plastic, the paint will adhere so much better if you buff the pieces with sandpaper first. Using some plastic adhesion promoter before spray painting will also do a lot to keep that paint from scuffing off. Then apply several light coats of spray paint. All right, any other people out there love organizational stuff like this? Look how cool that is! It holds it! Ah, it's so great! So my brine shrimp workflow maybe isn't the most convenient thing in the whole world and I'm going to improve it. This container is what I use for my brine shrimp hatching. It's called the Zis, Zis Brine Shrimp Hatchery. It's actually really nice, I really like it. I got it from the aquarium co-op site and I'll have a link for it down below. What's cool about it is it has a handle like this. There's also a valve down here, like this little knob, you can just twist it and Brian Trip will come out. I actually have it extended just for ease because I'm over there in a weird corner. I'm going to steal an idea, steal it, that I saw Dean from Dean's Fish Room do in his fish room. Dean actually has his attached to the wall. What he did was he took a piece of PVC, just a little piece, and he you know, he screwed it into the wall, and then all he has to do is hook it like this with this little handle, and it's just attached to the wall. I just wanna be able to walk over to my sink, and my brine shrimp are right here on the wall, and my water's right there, and I just do everything right here. It just makes my life that much easier. Check it out. right now. I'll eventually expand into another one of these Zis baby brine shrimp hatcheries, so that's why I'm doing another one. Hmm, I really need a light and some air though. I had to order something in the mail, so I'll come back to this. 
My internet router is currently on the ground. That's not good. Come on, Taylor, make a shelf for it or something. There, isn't it great? Wow, Taylor, that's really boring. Now I just have to buy like the correct sized ethernet cable uh, to go all around the fish room and over to my computer. Because I would really love to stream one of these days, it'd be like my only social life. You know what really bugs me? This door bugs me. The most obvious problem is that it's in its default kind of off-white factory color. Gross. Also, nail holes still unacceptable. This wall back here behind me is really cute. I love the color, but um, I don't like how the door is not the same color. The door needs to be the same color. First, I used putty to fill in all the little unsightly nail holes and gaps and divots. Sanding everything was the next step. Doing that will make the paint adhere better. I lightly sanded the door and all the trim pieces on this wall. First, I do a coat of white primer all over my pieces. Don't skip the primer. Then painting. I love painting, I could do it all day. When I was in high school, I would volunteer to be like unpaid labor when my friend's parents ever wanted to repaint any walls. I was weird. I did a few coats on the door and all the trim on the wall and I think having the wall all in one color really helps this little space seem a bit bigger and more unified. Was this totally worth all the effort? Yes, it was. I think it makes the whole room look just a little bit bigger, a little more, like maybe put together. Do you like my LED logo fish? Drop Dead Fred made it. I love it. Although I think I have to put on my to-do list um, hiding the cable a little bit better. I'm gonna put that on the list. This is my garage. It's not very big. It's actually very small. There's one end, there's the other end. Taylor, why is your garage so small? Well, when I moved into my new house, I actually converted the garage into my new fish room. Do you see as much potential as I do? That's why I even have a fish room. That's the only reason. There was a normal garage and I put a wall down the middle right here. Now I have a nice enclosed space that's fully insulated from winter cold. I also have a functional mini garage on this side. The door still opens. I have space for storage for my family stuff like bikes and boxes and tools, strollers, my treadmill, etc. The problem, however, is that this space is very, very not protected from the outside temperatures. It is freezing cold in the winter. It's roasting hot like an oven in the summer. It's because this garage door isn't insulated. Like this summer was pretty bad. It got so hot in this area that it was actually affecting the temperature in my fish room and it was just so hot. I was having trouble regulating the temperature because I don't have air conditioning. I even lost some fish when I went on a trip. I can barely use my treadmill out here, which I love my treadmill. I think I have a solution to help regulate the temperature of this area so my poor fish room doesn't just feel the negative effects. And that solution is to insulate the garage door. But first I have to sweep around in here to make it look way more clean and put together than it actually is. I bought a kit online for this. First, I have to completely clean the inside of the door. I'm using a degreaser to make sure that wherever the tape is, is going to be super squeaky clean to keep on my insulation. Now I apply the really heavy duty double-sided tape and the insulation is pre-cut, which is really nice since I'm doing this on my own today. Um, and then I remove the backing on the tape. I wait 10 minutes per instructions and then I put it into place like so. I finished, this took me all day. This is kind of tedious. I love it. I can't wait to see if this impacts not only my heating bill in the winter and making this space more usable in the winter, but also hopefully in the summer, I won't roast. Time will tell to see just how effective this is. Okay, like a week later, I'm back to my brine shrimp project. I had to wait for a replacement cable in the mail for this little LED light bar that I'm stealing from my fish cabinet. It's the perfect size for a side-by-side -side Zis brine shrimp hatchery area. So I screwed it into the bottom of this shelf. Now the light is plugged into my new power strip on the wall too. So that power strip's already come in handy. 
but it's still not ready. It needs air. Why have a separate air pump for my brine shrimp like I was doing before when I can use my existing air loop that I already made for my fish rack? All I have to do is add in another air tap. Air on and check it out. Fully functional above sink brine shrimp hatchery. Yes. Sometimes the smallest things can make such a difference. I really like this brine shrimp hatching area. I love how it's right next to the fish rack, right above the sink. I like how my clutter corner isn't nearly as cluttery anymore. It just feels good. I did so many little oddball tasks and it felt so good. It feels good to be back in the fish room again, taking things seriously. I really had to take the summer off. It was just too much. The kids were too much. It feels good. I'm the kind of person who, if I have a list full of tasks that need to be done and I'm able to check them all off, it just makes me feel really good about myself and very accomplished. And that's how I feel right now. I hope it was interesting seeing the things that I do in my fish room to make it better and to make it functional. Uh, if you have any questions at all about like the fish room or a fish room or systems or whatever, you can leave them in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer. I'll also leave some links to previous videos about the fish room, like my fish room playlist. So you can check those out too. Thanks so much guys. I have some fun videos and projects coming up. Thanks so much to my lovely patrons throwing like a dollar at me every month. It really helps buy my supplies for my projects. So I really appreciate it. By the way, I wasn't even able to complete all the things that I wanted to. Maybe I'll do a part two where I do like a DIY sound treatment in the fish room so my audio sounds better when I record. That might be part two. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.